Hey, what's going on everybody? It's T-Squared Games here, and today's going to be sort of a different kind of video. So, uh, this is a, a Nintendo Switch Pro controller, and it might not actually look like it because it's, uh, it's actually in a white shell. It kind of looks more like an Xbox controller. Um, but this is actually just a kind of a plastic shell piece that goes around. Um, right here I have... Right here I have the original shell. You can see the clear one with the Switch logo and everything. And it has the uh, grips there. So that's what came off of this. And uh, the project that we're going to be doing in this episode is just kind of repainting this white shell and uh, giving it a custom paint job and making it look really cool. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Uh, also, just a quick side note about this shell. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's like $20 on Amazon. You don't have to buy it. Of course, you can originally, if you have a Pro Controller, you can just paint the shell that comes with it. But I didn't want to because the shell is actually pretty cool and the grips are really nice and high quality. So I figured it would be better just to go for a blank white one that would be A, easier to paint because paint shows up better on white surfaces and uh, B, just easier in general because I didn't want to ruin my nice Pro Controller shell. The white shell actually came with these colored buttons. Uh, that were meant to replace the X, Y, A, B buttons here. You could do that if you wanted to, but these buttons are uh, pretty low quality compared to the other ones, and they didn't really fit with the whole... I didn't really like how they looked compared to just the flat black ones, so I think it looks a lot better this way. You might prefer the color buttons, I don't know. And of course, you can just mix and match, but since they're different styles of buttons, uh, it might look a little weird. But anyway, uh, I'm going to show you how to get into disassembling this uh, the Pro Controller, and this shell is essentially the same as this one, so that'll be pretty easy to show you how to take it apart, and it'll be just like as if you had the stock shell on. And then we're going to go over the painting process and everything like that. So, uh, yeah. Another quick side note about this shell is that uh, it is a pretty nice high-quality shell, like it feels high-quality and it feels comfortable to hold. Um, but the one thing is that uh, the plastic seams are a little bit more noticeable, I don't know if that's just because they don't fit well or if because the controller is white and obviously the seams are pretty dark so they're more easily noticeable. But um, I don't know, they really didn't strike me as being really high quality. So uh, there's probably something you can do to fix that, like sanding them or something. But it doesn't really take away from the whole experience or the comfortability, just like a little nitpicky thing. Anyway, yeah, let's get into uh, taking the controller apart and getting the shell off so you can paint it. So pretty much you're really only going to need uh, to take it apart a Phillips head screwdriver. So I have this uh, small one and it's good to have like a really small one like this one, as well as this bigger one just for unscrewing things once you're actually inside of the controller. Because you can see these screws down here are pretty small. So that's why you need this one, as well as to get into like a lot of the uh, screw holes and stuff are really narrow. So you have to use something that's pretty small to get to them. But anyway, you really just want to start by... Uh, unscrewing these ones at the bottom of the grips and then once you unscrew those uh, you should be able to get into the controller more a few minutes later okay right so once you get these two screws out you want to set them aside because these are pretty important they're the only ones uh, on the entire controller that are that size uh, but yeah once you unscrew those you should just be able to pull these grips right off and uh, on the original pro controller they actually slide on and off pretty easily like this one here from the original pro controller they're pretty loose on there, so uh, the ones that came with the replacement shell are a lot tighter, uh, and so that causes a little bit of a difference. Uh, you'll see pretty much this this kind of setup. And uh, these four screws, you can see them easier on mine because they're in these little white things, but uh, those screws are what you want to take out to take off the entire back plate. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that now. So you're going to need to use your small screwdriver again to go ahead and do all four of these screws. And once you do that, you should just be able to pull the back plate off. Okay, so I've taken all the screws out. And I would recommend that uh, if you can, try to leave all the screws in their original positions because uh, just the, the nature of this piece allows them to kind of sit in there. So you can set that aside. And uh, you can see you're met with the back of the controller here. And this is black, uh, regardless of what color shell you have, because it's just the internal of the Pro Controller, kind of the internal shell that you don't really see. So right off the bat here, this thing is the battery, and you can just take that out. You just pull it off from the left side, and uh, 
that will, I guess, prevent the little lights from flashing down here all the time, which can get annoying after a while. But uh, yeah, that's the battery. You can just take that out. Once you've done that, there are a few more screws you have to undo. So there is one right up here and here, uh, here on these sides. Uh, there are two that are kind of tucked away up at the top of this battery compartment here and here. So once you get those four all undone, uh, you'll be able to get into the actual internals and you can start to see here the trigger buttons that are down there. Um, but yeah, so you can pretty much just undo those four screws and we'll go into there. Okay, now once you've undone those screws, you should be able to start pulling the front shell off of the rest of this black piece. And uh, you want to do it at the handles of the controller first because those are a little sticky from the rumble packs that are in there. They have a little adhesive on them and you can feel them kind of start to unstick as you undo that part there. And uh, once you get that done, you want to hold that part apart while you pull the rest of the controller apart. Uh, you don't really want to apply that much force because there is a cable holding both halves of the controller together. As you can see, you just kind of want to open it up like that. You can kind of set it open like this, uh, but really it's just as simple as opening like that. Now, uh, a cool little Easter egg before we move on is that uh, Nintendo actually on the circuit boards of these controllers, uh, right behind the right side joystick, they have a little thing in there. Uh, I don't know if you can read that, but it says thanks to all game fans. So that's that's pretty cool, I thought. And uh, that's just printed right on the circuit board there. It doesn't really affect the circuitry or anything. It's just a little Easter egg that I thought was cool. Uh, anyway, moving along with uh, everything, uh, you can disconnect this ribbon cable if you want from this side of the board. Uh, you're going to have to reconnect it when you put the controller back together. Uh, I didn't reconnect it when I was putting this shell on in the first place. Uh, because I found it pretty hard to disconnect, but you can disconnect it if you want to, and it shouldn't really affect anything that uh, you do with the controller. It'll just make it easier if you have it separated. So if you just tease it out of there, you can see that was pretty easy, actually. So yeah, just don't really... This is really something that you don't want to break uh, because it's pretty delicate. But once you have it detached, you can pretty much just set this half aside. Uh, this entire shell piece with the joysticks inside it that has the little infrared receiver and the USB port on the top, uh, you don't have to do anything with this. This is actually completely, you don't have to touch this at all. You can just set it aside for the rest of the project. You don't need to paint anything. You don't need to take anything out of it. it uh, it's completely its own thing. So anyway, uh, getting the shell off of this piece, which holds all the buttons in, is pretty simple as well. So you there's just a few screws that hold it in. Uh, but the first thing you want to do is you want to kind of pull this smaller ribbon cable out. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but this black stripe thing here is actually another ribbon cable. And that's what connects the triggers to the main button circuit board. So you want to pull that out very delicately as well. And you can see that's pretty similar to this ribbon cable up here, just smaller. And uh, once you do that, you should be able to disconnect the button assembly and then uh, pull out all the buttons and eventually the front shell piece. So there are three screws that you want to take off first, and they are uh, pretty actually close to each other. They are here, here, and here. And those uh, all hold down the plastic that contains the trigger assembly that the uh, ribbon cable actually connects to. So you want to just undo those three screws. Uh, you can use your bigger screwdriver for that actually because uh, that would probably make it easier. So yeah, you want to be a little careful doing undoing these screws obviously because they're part of a circuit board which are usually pretty fragile. Um, but you really shouldn't have a problem and uh, unless you're like actively trying to break it. So I'll just go ahead and pull those screws out. Okay, and once you do that, you should be able to lift this entire uh, trigger bumper button assembly out of there, and you can set that aside as well. That doesn't need to be painted or anything unless you really want to, at which point you can take out these little uh, rubber pad things. You can take off the triggers, uh, but really you don't need to do anything with those. As you can see, these bumper buttons just kind of swing up and out. Uh, if you really wanted to paint these, which I am not uh, for this video. Anyway, this little stripe here uh, that goes between the bumper button and the trigger button, 
uh, can actually be seen on the outside of the controller, but it's really not noticeable because the buttons there are black anyway, and they're pretty much the same color, so they blend in. But if you did want to paint that, that's how you would take out the bumper button. I would imagine the trigger button is pretty similar as well. And uh, the bumper button just slides back in the same way it went out, and it clicks into its little groove, and it's pretty hard to get back out again. So, yeah. All in all, that's the whole trigger assembly. Now we can move on to pulling out the circuit board for the front-facing buttons. Okay, now on the circuit board back here, okay, there's only two screws back here. So there's this one here in the corner, and there's this one right next to the white ribbon cable. So what you want to do is you just want to pull those out. Again, uh, your big screwdriver is probably going to be easier for that. So yeah, once you undo those, you can just pull off this entire circuit board. And uh, one of the things you might notice is that some of the rubber pads that hold the buttons in might have been sticking to it. Uh, this one is the one that holds the ABXY buttons in. And uh, this clear one is the one that backs the home button, actually. So uh, obviously you want to hold on to those, uh, whichever buttons you're using, the ones that came with the shell, or if you're using the original ones like I am. But uh, yeah, this whole circuit board is what holds the buttons in and what allows their inputs to be registered. So you want to set this aside as well. And then from here, this is the front half of the controller. This is the thing you're going to paint. So what you want to do first is actually pull off all of these rubber covers. So there's this one that covers the uh, minus button and the capture button. Then there's this one that covers the D-pad, and uh, my D-pad just fell out there. But uh, you can put all the those aside. And obviously, we already took out the ones for the home button and the ABXY. Uh, this one covers the plus button. Set those aside. And then if you just flip the controller over, all the buttons should just fall out at that point. And uh, what you're going to have from there is just the empty controller shell. Uh, whichever one you're using, they're essentially the same thing. Uh, inside and out. So once you have everything set aside, this is what you should hold on to. Uh, you're going to hold on to the grips if you're painting them. I am. The grips from the original Pro Controller are, you can see they're textured kind of, but yeah, you can see that these are kind of textured and uh, that's what makes them really nice to hold. Um, so obviously uh, I'm not going to paint these. I don't know why you would want to paint these, but if you have the other ones from the other shell like I do, uh, then obviously I'm going to be painting these, so I'm going to set these aside for paint, as well as the back and front shell pieces, uh, which I'm going to be painting as well. So you pretty much want to set these aside from the rest of your hardware that goes inside. What I'm going to go over next actually is sanding and how you should go about sanding these pieces uh, for painting, because usually when you're painting plastic, it's a good idea to sand it first so the paint sticks better and stays on and uh, it really just it leads to a more high quality paint job. Day two. Okay, so now we're going to get into sanding the uh, controller pieces. And uh, so my tips for sanding are uh, always do it either outside or on a surface that's easy to clean up. Um, number two, use when you're sanding plastic at least, uh, use a high grit level sandpaper. That means it's gonna be finer. So right here I have 140 and here's some 150. And uh, start with the lower one, so go uh, like this is 140 so I would use this one and then I would go up to 150 to finish it off uh, yeah so then other than that uh, try not to breathe in the dust because it's bad for you and uh, yeah pretty much just sand the whole thing I'm gonna see if I can sand off this super switch logo because it's pretty ugly uh, hopefully it comes off easily otherwise it might mess up the paint but whatever uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and try to sand now. 12 seconds later. Okay, so you can see that the logo is coming pretty cleanly off, so that's good. Uh, that's a good sign. And uh, once you're done sanding, you want it to be pretty smooth. Uh, obviously, the original is finished, so it's not gonna be as smooth as that. But uh, we'll solve that with our clear coat and everything when we paint. Okay, so I finished doing the front of the controller with the 140 grit, and uh, it's pretty much a matte finish now. Uh, it feels pretty smooth, but obviously I'm going to move on to 150. The logo came off pretty well, actually, so I'm pretty happy about that. And uh, there's not really any shiny spots left. Obviously, really only did this front part because uh, the, these parts down here and the inside are all not going to be seen. So uh, it doesn't really matter if the paint sticks to them well or not. So I really only sanded this part. Uh, obviously, you can do these parts, but uh, just so it's less work, I'm going to do just that part. But yeah, now I'm going to move on to the 150 grit. 
and I'll do the, all the rest of the pieces. Okay, so I've gone ahead and sanded all the pieces, uh, the back and the two handles as well. And so the next step now is to go outside and start painting it. Okay, so here are the paints I'm going to be using. I have this uh, blue one. Uh, it's a matte finish and it's called Oasis Blue, a uh, Rust-Oleum paint. Uh, then we have a uh, glossy black. And then uh, to top it all off, we have the matte clear coat that goes on top. So everything gets finished on top of it. Okay, so I've got all my pieces set up in there. And I've got it all on newspaper and everything, so I don't spray uh, my patio. But I have my spray paint here, so I'm going to start shaking it up. And uh, we're going to go ahead and spray all that stuff. Okay, here goes the first coat. Okay, so uh, it's been a while, uh, I'm back outside, and I've put my stencil on that I'm going to spray. Uh, so now I'm going to do the black spray paint. Day three. Alright, so I've gotten the shell all painted, so now I'm going to be showing you how to put it back together. So you want to have all your pieces, all your screws all together, uh, as well as your shell. And you want to start with the faceplate of the shell. And what you want to do with the faceplate is first you want to set in all the buttons. So uh, the A, B, X, Y buttons all have uh, different tabs on them, so it's impossible to put them in the wrong spot. So as you can see, the B button fits in uh, right there, and it won't fit in in any other slot. Uh, same with all the other buttons. Uh, this is the Y button. Let's see, here is the A button. And the X button on top. So yeah, you put all the buttons in, and then once you put all the buttons in, uh, you take the little rubber pad that goes on top of the buttons, and you just lay it right on top of the tabs like that. It just sits on there like that. Uh, next, we're going to do the D-pad, and the D-pad's a pretty simple one, so you just take your D-pad, and there's a little corner cut out of it, and uh, the cutout corner goes uh, where the thumbstick is, and then you take the um, cover for the D-pad, which also has a cutout corner, and that goes in the same spot, just sitting right there. Uh, let's see what's next. Uh, the next things to do are the capture button and the minus button. Okay, so here's the minus button. And you just set the minus button right to the hole there, right above the capture. And the capture button actually has a cutoff corner, you can see. And so that drops into that slot right there and so once you've got those ones set in then you can get this uh, cap and that one just goes on right there like that and sits right on top there uh, then we're going to do the plus button so the plus button is essentially the same as the minus button uh, it just sits in there like so and then you can get the little plus button cap, which is this one, and that one sits right up there. All right, now it's time for the home button, and the home button actually has a bunch of different pieces to it, and uh, this piece is the little like clear ring that goes around the home button. Uh, this piece is the actual home button itself, which sits inside there, and uh, this one's kind of finagly to get in there, but it essentially lines up. There's like a corner and that corner sits inside uh, another little space. Uh, it, it sits in there like that. Uh, and then it will be aligned there. You can kind of see it, sort of, when the light hits it. But yeah, that's how you want the home button to go. And uh, the home button actually doesn't have one of the black pads. It has this clear one up here. And so the clear one, yeah, it just sits in there like that with the bumpy side up and then that one that whole assembly will just drop into its slot there and so once you have all the buttons set in uh, you can actually put the circuit board down and now one of the things i noticed about the circuit board uh, i have actually disconnected the ribbon cable from this side and attached it to the uh, controller here but um 
The little uh, ports for the ribbon cable actually have this little black tab that flips up and down. And uh, when it's flipped up, that's when it's easier to slide the ribbon cable into it. So what we're going to do first actually is uh, take this side of the controller and put the ribbon cable in. So you can just have that little tab flipped up and then you line up the ribbon cable, slide it in with the blue side of the ribbon cable facing towards the black tab. And then you just close the black tab and the ribbon cable should be pretty snug in there. So yeah, once that's attached, you can just leave that be and then sort of swing it so that it's uh, resting on top of all of your buttons that you've just gone and put in. And it should sit right into place. So now we're going to screw that in using two of our black screws here, uh, much the same as how we disassembled it. So one goes on each side of the circuit board. Anyway, yeah, just go ahead and screw that on in. And then same goes for the other side. You just take your screw, screw it on right there on that side. And uh, don't to screw too tightly. You want to make it pretty snug, but not too tightly that you break the circuit board. All right, once you've done that, you can take your triggers and the triggers uh, just sit on top of that circuit board. So they should sit down in place. So yeah, once you've do, done that, you can take the three screws from that side and go ahead and screw it on in. And there actually is one underneath this ribbon cable, so don't actually plug that one in first. Uh, you've got to screw into it. So we'll take our last screw and put it right down in there. So yeah, just go ahead and s screw into there and uh, put this ribbon cable back in like that and we'll close the tab. All right, so this side of the controller is pretty much done now. Uh, what you can do is actually flip this side back onto it and that will uh, put everything back together. I believe. Yep. Okay, there we go. Make sure all your buttons are clicky and everything. Make sure there's no paint blocking the way. Especially make sure on the home button and capture buttons because those are a bit finicky. And uh, yeah. Then you can take your battery and uh, take that and put that in how it was. Uh, this side with the terminals on the right side. Just click it in and click some buttons on your controller and make sure they all make the lights on the bottom light up. Then you want to screw in the screws that were here, 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 and here. I believe we need the small screwdriver for this one. So yeah, there you go, here. You might wanna put the uh, battery in after you screw these in, but I don't really think it matters. Okay, now you can take the back plate of the controller and that will just click in right there. And you can use the four silver screws to screw that in. Here. Okay, once you've done that, then you can take your, you can go ahead and take your grips, uh, which my grips, uh, the paint dripped a lot on them, but uh, I think just a little bit of touching up will uh, help fix that, so. Once, make sure the back is clicked down securely and then just slide the grips on and go ahead and slide those on so they're all secure. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look too good on the back, you can see, but uh, I think the controller actually turned out pretty well. Uh, I did the Switch logo on the front. Uh, you might have seen that on the stencil, but uh, yeah, everything's looking all good. And uh, yeah, that's the finished controller. So uh, I think the paint job looks really good. Obviously, it could have been a little better, but uh, I didn't really give it that much time. I've really only done this over three days. But uh, yeah, that's how you paint your Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and put it back together. Make sure that you put the two screws down here. But uh, after that extra layer of paint, my um, grips are actually pretty tight and snug on there without the screws. And these screws are just generally a pain to get off in the first place. So I think you can get away with uh, not having those screws on there. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure to check out the link in the description if you want to check out our merch. And I'll see you in the next one. T-squared out.